welcome back to Pokepaint, the series where I design new Pokemon for a brand new and fan-made Pokemon region. As promised for this new season, we're starting off with a brand new region and designing a whole new roster of Pokemon. For those of you who are just joining us, welcome. In the last season, I designed over 70 Pokemon, 8 gyms, and a whole map for the Coloniar region. A region based on the New England area of the United States. If you want to go back and watch that season, I'll link it here, but as many of you may have guessed by the intro, we're going to someplace tropical for this season. To a southern Caribbean island chain known as the Virgin Islands. To be honest, when I was deciding on a region for season one, this was one of my top picks. I eventually chose New England last time because, well, I grew up there. And I picked the Virgin Islands this time for a similar reason. When I was young, my family used to vacation there quite a bit. It's one of my favorite places on the planet, and as so, I know the area relatively well. Also, when I was a kid during one of my first trips there, I came up with a few ideas for a Pokemon region based on St. John, one of the islands there. And although there will be many changes, I'm going to carry a couple of the eight ideas over that I still like. Funnily enough, two of the Pokemon that I came up with back then were a Mongoose Pokemon and a Sea Urchin Pokemon, which have since seen light in the real Pokemon series. Back in 2010, I thought they were pretty clever ideas, and I guess the Pokemon company agreed with me. Also, in homage to my original ideas, the first island we will visit on our journey will be based on St. John. But we're getting carried away with ourselves. You're here to see me make some Pokemon today. And who better to start off with than the starters. So we'll start with our grass type starter, based on a tree frog. Its name is Foliep, combining the words foliage and leap. I simplified the body shapes of a frog to differentiate it from the past frog Pokemon. I was mindful to not let Foliep just turn into a grass type froakie. In its first form it would be only a grass type, but moving on it would gain a type. In fact, all three of these starters will gain a secondary typing that will be related to the way that they fight. I think your choice of a starter Pokemon should affect not just the early game, but the late game as well. So they will all fight differently. My idea for this line is a grass type tree frog Pokemon that would eventually fight by kickboxing, taking inspiration from the South American martial arts style Capoeira. Therefore, in its final form, its physical attack stat would be the highest. But for now, it will have even stats with the others in the trio. Full Leap, the tree frog Pokemon. In the wild, they live in dense jungles. Due to this, they will require special care to stay hydrated if in captivity. They are known to be rather outgoing and bond strongly to their team because in the wild they live in packs. Scientists have observed a hierarchy like a caste system in these packs, and the leaders are, quite often, their strongest fighter. Now we have the starter Pokemon that's based on a chameleon, the fire type, Ambellion. As I explained in the finale of season one, many good starter trios have three personality types, the hyper one, the impish one, and the cool one. And although I'm a little more loose with these traits this time, this one falls solidly into the impish category. I struggled to find a color scheme as well as a body pattern that I really liked, and it took me right up in the, until the end to do so. Ambellion would be a pure fire type with balanced stats, but would eventually become a fire and ghost type with a high speed and special attack stat. The dex entry goes as follows. Embellion, the chameleon Pokemon. This forest-dwelling jungle Pokemon was once thought to be endangered until scientists realized that they were actually abundant in the wild. 
They have excellent camouflage abilities, however, they don't gain the ability to become fully transparent until they are much older. At this stage, when visible, they are susceptible to predation, so they are not very friendly. A trainer with one has to work very hard to gain its trust, but once gained, it is a bond that will last for life if cared for properly. And finally, we have our water-type Pokemon, Agwirtle. This Pokemon was actually inspired by my original designs as a kid. My original starter trio was a grass-type sea turtle, a fire-type stingray, and a water-type fish. Yeah, I know, I was a child prodigy when it came to creativity, wasn't I? <laughs> it's safe to say with my original sea turtle Pokemon, I was heavily inspired by Torterra, as its last form had a whole island on its shell. A big concern I have for a Gwirtle is pretty much the same thing. It's that it will just end up being a Squirtle stand-in. So as much as I love Squirtle, I tried to stray as far away from that design as I possibly could. That is because it will eventually become a sea turtle mixed with a submarine. That will be a water steel type. And although that's pretty close to Blastoise, I think I have enough there to work with, basing each design off ranks in the military. But I'll get more into that in the next episode. A Gwirtle, the sea turtle Pokemon. At birth, its shell is soft and leathery, and therefore, they have little protection from predators. Their first challenge in life is to rush across the beach and into the water without being attacked by the wingle. If done correctly, it will meet up with the rest of its family in the water and begin its structured training in the wild. Trainers may find this Pokemon in captivity to be strongly defiant, but they work best with a strong leader. So that's all the Pokemon for this week, but we're not quite done with the episode yet. One thing I thought was lacking in the Colonial region was my designs for the human characters. Many of them were rushed and did not have much substance to their character, and although the protagonists are difficult to personify, I'll be developing their designs today. The male and female protagonists in the games often have swapped color palettes, so that's what I'm going to do today with the boy wearing red and the girl blue. I took inspiration from many of the past protagonists, but especially Hilbert and Hilda from Black and White. It may surprise many people to learn that their canon ages are 14, when most protagonists are 10. But apparently that's not really a hard rule that the Pokemon Company follows, with Red in the originals being 11, Brendan and May from Emerald being 12, and apparently, Serena and Callum from X and Y are 16. Although that might be a little weird to hear, I do really like that detail because it makes the Pokemon world feel a little more like a real place. That not every region has the same starting age for Pokemon training. Just like how, in real life, many different countries legally see children become adults at vastly different ages. Also, working with older characters, in my opinion, leads to more unique and stronger designs as the younger you are, the less defined you tend to be as a person, generally speaking. All that to say, Sebastian and Sophia, our protagonists, will be 15. They are named as such as, according to BabyCenter.com, they are on the top for Hispanic boy and girl names that parents gave their kids in 2020. So there we have it. Our protagonists and our starters for our brand new season of Pokepaint. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I promise we'll get to the evolutions, 
and into unraveling the region in more detail in the coming episodes. But for now, if you have an idea for a new Fakemon, then leave it in the comments below. My other social medias are up here and in the description for anybody who wants to check them out. If you like this video and want to see more like it, then subscribe and turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next.